After just about two months, I was able to close 20% more than I had before. She's just shy and other lies that I've loved. It wasn't until I was 18 years old, I had to go on to set as a background actor. And for those of you who don't know, background actors are just those random people that you see in the background to make a scene look like it's real. But by the time it was lunchtime, I just decided to sit alone where there's nobody else in that whole long table is one of those long picnic tables and i put my meal down and i sat there and i proceeded to eat my dry chicken and dry vegetables and thankfully later on there were so many people going into that area that people sat around me but they were just sitting next to me because it was an empty space and they had to sit somewhere they weren't sitting around me because they were trying to talk to me or socialize or that they knew me from earlier in the day it was so embarrassing that I can't, as an adult, go up to somebody and say hi. That was the moment when I decided I need to freaking do something because I didn't want to be alone again at lunchtime. I didn't want to be embarrassed at the fact that I couldn't socialize and I knew I was gonna see the same exact people the next day. The next day, the call time was 6 a.m. so it's freaking freezing, it's cold outside, we're coming in to check in as background actors. And my goal for that day was to at least talk to at least one person so I won't be sitting alone at lunch. So I have a lunch buddy and I see there's some background actors waiting to be checked in. And I noticed a girl before me walked up to this group and they said, good morning. And I thought, oh my gosh. <laughs> What a brilliant idea. I can say good morning because it's morning time. This makes sense. I can say good morning. So I gather up all the courage in the world. My heart was pounding as I'm walking towards them thinking about, am I going to get rejected? Are they going to look at me like I'm weird? They're going to shun me. And all of these thoughts are going through my head as I'm walking up to this group of girls. And I said, hey, good morning. Like I was probably shaking. I, I can... I feel it right now. I was probably shaking. And to my surprise, they said good morning back. That was a moment of possibilities and hope opening up of, wow, I actually had a plan to say good morning. I got a response. Now I'm standing in this group of girls and we're all waiting to check in together as a group. I know that might sound so silly and it's something that a lot of people go through in elementary school, but I suppressed so much social growth that I should have had when I was five or six years old. I suppressed that because of my mother saying, oh, well, she's shy and dismissing the fact that I can't say hello or I don't say anything or I don't answer back. I just adopted that mantra of, oh, I'm just too shy. I'm just shy. That's just my personality. So therefore I don't have to do anything. I don't have to say anything. I could just be a shy girl and, and that's it. I discovered that that didn't have to be the way it was. And maybe that's actually a lie. Maybe I'm not just shy. Maybe I just didn't develop the skills that I needed. That good morning really triggered just so much in my life. Ever since then, I've been on this journey of knowing how to communicate with people, the psychology behind bonding and socialization, because it is complex, especially if you were like me and hiding behind the mantra of I'm just too shy, or I'm not a social person, or I'm not an extrovert. And all of these lies that we tell ourselves, or perhaps excuses that we tell ourselves in order to not do something because of fear or anxiety or the lack of skills it can all be learned and then fast forward about five or six years i go into a sales position in the sales position we were selling a recovery program for addicts it became obvious that i was afraid to ask questions to push them to go deeper what's going on actually and it wasn't until one of my colleagues pointed out that tina I think you're not able to go there because you don't allow yourself to go there. There's a defense mechanism that's happening because you don't want to go there because you haven't gone there. And the thing is, they can feel that. They can feel that you don't want to go there. So how are they going to feel comfortable 
going there and explaining what it is that they've been through. I couldn't really ask the right questions for the other person to talk about their dark moments. And if anybody knows people who have struggled with addiction, there are dark moments. You're not going to a recovery program because everything was fine and dandy. There was a dark moment, probably multiple dark moments, and there's probably even something greater, something traumatic that happened earlier that triggered all of these addiction habits. Even with all the skill sets and the techniques that I've learned throughout these years, and I'm way more confident than I ever was, but still I was comfortable up to a certain point. And up to a certain point, all dandy, but then we hit that certain level of intimacy and vulnerability and I would completely shut down. So I was doing this huge disservice by people who genuinely really needed this recovery program because I had my defense mechanisms and my defense mechanism was being angry. My defense mechanism was huffing up, don't get emotional, just go, just do it, just do what you need to do. That's the mantra I had in my head. And <laughs> this is quite common in the Asian culture and I think I adopted it from my mother who's Japanese and my grandma. It's a very tough love type of response that I was told as a child and I had to dispel that. And that opened up a whole different wormhole <laughs> that I had to really work on and deep dive into myself. I did have a help of a professional as well at the time and after after just about two months, I was able to close 20% more than I had before, just simply based on that. I can point back to so many times that it's prevented me from progressing to the next level or perhaps making a connection or a relationship with somebody that I really wanted to make, but I just, I just couldn't do it, right? I, I just didn't have enough confidence. I didn't believe in myself enough. I just thought I, I wasn't that person. That's for somebody else. There's no way I could have done that without going into deep work and dispelling the lies that other people told me and that I believed. So I did this exercise that Lisa Nichols is famous for, which is write down all of your lies that you tell yourself and then in red ink, tell the truth, tell the reality of the situation. So not what you're feeling emotionally, but logically what is actually happening and then erase all of the lies that you tell yourself. Basically bringing the lies to your consciousness and awareness and therefore you don't rely on that as an excuse to not be the best version of yourself. Those are my simple thoughts. If you liked today's video, please hit the like button, comment below, let me know your thoughts and subscribe if you like today's content and I will see you on the next video. If you'd like to learn more from me, check out the link below. I have one-on-one -on -one coaching courses and more. Or feel free to add me on any other social media. Hope to connect soon.